Okay, so V3. Um, V3 is coming down, and which foramen is V3 going to go through? Foramen of valley. Right, foramen of valley, because standing room only. So there's your foramen of valley. Uh, the thing to keep in mind for V3 is that this one is motor and sensory. So V2 was sensory, V1 was sensory, and now we're going to deal with some motor fibers. So V3 is coming down, and it's going to go through foramen of valley. And immediately after foramen of valley, you're going to see otic ganglion. And they kind of actually are like really smushed together like that. The nice thing about this is that otic ganglion, if this is your face, again, the big picture is important here. Um, otic ganglion is kind of on the opposite side, so it can't really be tagged in lab. So it will not be tagged in lab, so that's a nice thing. So you don't have to worry about it, but you should understand the concept. So foramen of valley and associate that immediately with otic ganglion. Now, what have we said about otic ganglion in the past? Which cranial nerve is that associated with? Cranial nerve 9. Cranial nerve 9, which should remind you of? The lesser petrosal nerve. Lesser petrosal. So there we go. This is cranial nerve 9 giving off lesser petrosal nerve. Lesser petrosal nerve is going to go through foramen of valley to get to otic ganglion because if you associate these two together, then now you know lesser petrosal getting to otic ganglion goes through foramen ovale. Now, where does lesser petrosal nerve go to? What is it trying to innervate from back at the beginning? The parotid bone. Exactly right. Parasympathetics, 3, 7, 9, and 10. Here's cranial nerve 9, lesser petrosal, hitting up the otic ganglion, going to the parotid gland. And we mentioned it's V3 right after foramen ovale. So that's the preview and now the details. So this is it happening here. One thing to keep in mind, I kind of threw in greater petrosal nerve here, and lesser petrosal and greater petrosal run parallel to each other. So, I mean, I draw it here and it's really bad, but if you keep that in mind, that they're kind of parallel running next to each other, then when you open up netters later on, you can actually see that relationship. So it's kind of nice having them close together here. Um, so moving on, we said that it's gonna go to hit up the parotid gland. So let's show how that happens. So V3 is gonna go down, and one of the branches that it gives off is auriculotemporal. So auricular temporal, again, big picture. If you have your face like that and your ears over there, you're gonna swing back. I tried to kind of draw it going back and then going up the ear. So we're swinging back, auricular temporal, and then going up the ear. So as you're swinging back, you're hitting the parotid gland. Very important high yield relationship to remember is you have middle meningeal artery right here. And this is that relationship where you have middle meningeal artery going up through the split of auricular temporal. Try to draw that there. So. Middle meningeal artery is here, and lesser petrosal is now able to go on auriculotemporal, hop on, and hit parotid gland and innervate the parasympathetics there. So if we're talking about middle meningeal artery, which middle meningeal artery is a branch off of what artery? Maxillary artery. Exactly right, maxillary artery. So an important thing to remember is that this area here for V3 is the IT fossa. So if you remember that this is the IT fossa here, the middle, the maxillary artery runs in IT fossa, and one of the most important branches that it gives off is the middle meningeal artery. This will most likely be tagged in lab. It will be tagged in lab, unless they hear me saying this on the video and then they won't tag it, but it probably will be. So keep that in mind. And then the last thing to remember for auricular temporal nerve is that as it's swinging up, and you can actually palpate this, there's a very important artery that runs right alongside it. Which artery? Superficial temporal. Superficial temporal artery runs runs right alongside auriculotemporal nerve. So that's an important relationship. A lot of high yield stuff here. You can feel it in front of your ear. Yeah, you can actually feel it right there. So moving on, the next branch that we're gonna give off is the buccal, buccal, I don't know, there's probably a right way to pronounce it. That is obviously going to the cheek, and so it's sensation from the mouth. And then after the cheeks, if you move down in your face, you're gonna have your tongue, so we're gonna give off the lingual branch. Lingual branch, without looking, that's important because what nerve is associated and hitches a ride on lingual nerve? Corda tympani of Corda C7. Tympani, exactly, of C7. There you go, right there. And what ganglia is hanging off of lingual nerve? Submandibular ganglia. Submandibular ganglia, so there's that. So again, you can tie those relationships together. This is cranial nerve 7 from the very beginning. Here's your lingual nerve. It's sensory, and there's your submandibular ganglia hanging off of it, and there's your corda tympani jumping on to do its thing. So moving on, after we're done with that, V3 moves on and it gives off, before the mandibular foramen, it will give off an important nerve, or two nerves, your nerve to mylohyoid and the anterior belly of the digastric. So two connections to make here, mylohyoid and anterior belly of the digastric. So mylo and anterior. As opposed to, where have you heard posterior belly of the digastric before? CN7. Cranial nerve seven gives off Posterior, not anterior, 
posterior branch, if you remember from before, here's cranial nerve seven, and down at the very bottom, kind of drawn the same exact way, is nerve two, posterior digastric. Posterior, and not mylohyoid, but stylohyoid. So if you make those associations, that's gonna help a lot later on when they tag it on the practicals. Stylo and post are cranial nerve seven, as opposed to V3 has milo and anterior. After you go through the mandibular foramen, you're left with the inferior alveolar nerve, and that's sensory for the lower teeth. And one important connection to make here, inferior alveolar, V3. So what's the other name for V3? Which um, nerve? Mandibular nerve. Mandibular nerve, exactly right. So always keep the big picture in mind. Mandibular, we're at the bottom, inferior alveolar. So when you're kind of memorizing this, it's the concept helps a lot. So inferior alveolar, mandibular, V3. V2, superior alveolar. V2 is which nerve? Uh, maxillary. Maxillary nerve, exactly right. So V2, maxillary nerve, superior alveolar, as opposed to V3, inferior alveolar. Another thing that V2 has, infraorbital. So bottom of the eye, as opposed to V1, which is which nerve? Ophthalmic nerve. Ophthalmic nerve, which has superorbital. Superorbital, infraorbital. Superior alveolar, inferior alveolar. So this is the whole point of drawing it all together is that you can make all these big picture connections. Um, the last thing after inferior alveolar, it goes through mental foramen and gives off the mental nerve. And goes to the chin. Goes to the, goes to the chin, exactly right. And that should be it. 